All right, so here's the front house, uh, the bedroom unit's gonna go above that window that I just pointed at right here, living room's gonna go right here where I'm pointing. Pipes are gonna go behind into this restroom and up into uh, the ceiling through the attic towards the side of the house. This uh, back bedroom is gonna have a unit centered right there where I'm pointing. And uh, obviously the pipes are gonna go right behind that into the exterior wall. And then I'm gonna come back over here and show you the back house. There's two separate units, two separate meters. So they have to have their own condensing units. There's a front house, this is the back house. And uh, this unit's gonna have just one head mounted right there where I'm pointing. Uh, I was thinking about going towards the right and then up with the line set and I ended up going towards the left. Here's the attic access for that back house. It's in the bathroom. Now I'm going to show you where the two condensers are going to go. They're both going to go um, in this little mechanical area and between both homes where the water heaters are. I just thought um, this would be the best spot for them. Um, they're not going to be facing each other like that. They're going to be... I'm going to separate them. So right here, I'm trying to plan out the electrical, which way I'm going to route it and what material I'm going to use. All right, so now I'm going to go and grab my drill and drill a hole through the stucco so that I know where I am at. And then I'm going to make a bigger hole and run the conduit. And I'm going to do the same thing back here. This is the back part. Here's the other end for the electrical where it's going to come out. So I bought this for pulling the wire because I am often pulling the wire by myself. And it worked great, actually. Better than I expected. So I'm going to be using this more often. It has those, um, those rollers on all four corners. It was great. Oh, that's all I got to say about that tool. So this is something that I like to do when I'm pulling the wires. Um, I like to make them thin, like where the, you know, the connection goes into the fish tape. I like to trim them like in half. There's no, there's no need for me to have, you know, all the strands connected there. See, and it makes for a, a skinnier um, knot or connection uh, at the beginning and it makes it a lot easier to pull. So as you can see, pulling the wire with this little contraption here, it's so easy. I highly recommend it. And they're not sponsoring me. <laughs> not sponsored by anybody, but check it out. Zero damage to the, to the wires. Okay, so this is like a quick tip for the new guys. Don't ever put wire nuts in here. This is not a junction box. It's just for uh, pulling wire. And right here I'm showing you where the conduit goes into one panel because it's two separate panels. And then I put a nipple right there so that I can run the wires from the other circuit through that nipple. And then they all go through one conduit. Just made more sense. All right, so back here is the section where the water puddles. It just tends to puddle. So. What I intend to do is after I dig my dry wells, which you're seeing right here, is to put all that dirt back in that area where where the water puddles. So I'm just showing you right here that the, the hole is over 16 inches in diameter and it's about um, 26, 27 inches deep. So this is something that I like to do whenever the customer is not around or if I don't take a video of it, I like to stick a PVC pipe and pull the pipe out in front of him so that he can see um, just how deep the actual well is. And now I'm pouring water. I poured 10 gallons of water just to see the rate of how, um, how fast the water was, you know, sinking into the hole. So once I'm satisfied that the uh, water is soaking into the dirt, then I'll go ahead and fill it up with gravel. So this is what I decided to do right here. I was going to pour gravel and then put the pad, but 
this just sounded or in my mind it just it looked better in my mind to do this so right here I'm uh, using this kit that comes with a condensate pump you can see I already ran the copper there for the drain um, the pump goes mounted right there where you see that black holes and then that that I don't know how many pins that is but that pin connector that you see right there hanging down that black wide one that I just bumped into that one goes into the pump and I guess that powers it and it's also like some kind of um, safety overflow switch in there too but I wasn't too happy with the pump I thought it was too noisy uh, and on the other unit I decided to go with a different type of pump because the front unit um, it's a bigger unit so I wanted to use the, the bigger pump the bigger pump actually was super quiet so I'm no longer gonna use these pumps I mean it works fine it pumps the water out does what it's supposed to do I just thought it was a little noisier than it needed to be there you can see that the pump and the cover looks great so another quick tip for the new installers if you ever can't get the nut to go inside the pipe if you don't already know this um, you can use your crescent wrench and just tighten it up a little bit and just uh, twist it back and forth, back and forth as you go forward and twist it back and forth as you go back and that will round out your pipe so that now it's going to be more round and, and that that nut will go all the way through if you want it to go even more, like right there I, I wanted it to go a little bit more so I got the crescent wrench back on there, just a few more twists and that's it hope that helps you all right this tip is specific it's specific for John Israel okay John Israel jr. listen up buddy next time that they complain about um, you having to put Rubitex <laughs> with duct tape right there really close uh, to the Schrader valves um, remember you can always do this just uh, you can cheat See? See what I'm doing right there? You can do that. <laughs> and then you tape it over there in the back where nobody can see. Okay? So it's pretty obvious what I'm doing here. I'm putting nylog on on the Schraders and I'm, uh, on the cores. And then I'm putting on the all the fittings. Because I'm about to pressure test. And then um, after that I'm going to start the vacuum. So I want to make sure that my stuff is not leaking. Alright, so I need an explanation from Daikin on this one. Why do I have to bend that up so that I can fit? I have to use my benders to bend that up so that I can connect the fitting, the liquid tight fitting on here for both uh, the power and for the control wiring. It's a little bit annoying. Daikin, get on it, man. So this jacket for for the line set, uh, not only does it protect the line set, but it also it looks pretty nice. I think it's better than than line set tape. So here you're gonna see the liquid tide. I ran liquid tide instead of um, EMT. There were just too many bends, and I wanted to hide it. And this was the best way to hide the conduit. Then the drain had to go behind the. A water heater and then down and under well you'll see right now um, so I got pretty good pretty good pitch okay so right here we're gonna use a different type of pump um, the drain line comes out this way I'm probably gonna change it actually I do end up changing it uh, so that it comes out to the right side and this one is going to sit right below the unit. It's a different type of kit that comes with it. So this uh, line set comes out through into the bathroom. And then it goes up in through the ceiling, up into the attic, to the side yard. So here you can see the line set cover that I used in the bathroom to hide the pipe. And now you're going to see the condensate pump kit that I used. Super quiet pump. This is the way to go by far.
so close. So it's right here that I remembered. Secure the pipe from the bottom, buddy. Ay, ay, ay. So this is a cool little trick that I don't remember where I picked it up. <laughs> Pinterest probably was one of those places. But yeah, you don't have the right size wrench, but you got a few extra washers or some nickels in your pocket. This is the way to do it. Cause I still wanted to use the torque wrench, but I didn't have the right head for that. But this solved my issue. So we are done. Up and running. This one too. <laughs> See? Is that for you? here right here you can see I had to do a T with that line set cover to take the drain coming from the top and connecting to the other unit um, for the bedroom This is straight, this is crooked. That's where they wanted the controllers, right next to the light switches. Super quiet, nice and cool. Pumps tested, good, no leaks. This one just goes down and under and then it tees into that one. Not too shabby I'd say. The water should theoretically run this way. I don't know if you can see right here. It's a little bit higher now. So originally I was going to put this on gravel, but I thought the gravel might run off or something, so I decided to just put this instead. I think it was a, be a better choice because it actually matched the height of that. So then with the pad and that one with the pad, they're both at about the same level. So that's done. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. See you on the next one.